John Wick, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Somebody please get this man a gun. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video not yet subscribed to this channel, please make sure you take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias, and of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Let's hit a review of John Wick Chapter 4 and then stick around for the box office updates. I must begin by confessing that I lied, or at least made a grave error. I recently told my YouTube audience that Tom Cruise is the last real action hero in Hollywood. Well, he isn't. At least, he's not the only one. Enter Keanu Reeves, stage right. If you've enjoyed the previous John Wick entries, then drop your Glock, your Heckler and Koch, your Benelli, or your Sig Sauer, and race to the nearest PLF theater, Preferably in a slate gray 1969 Mustang Boss 429. And strap into that luxury recliner for nearly three hours of pure, mind-bending carnage incarnate. Normally, when I'm greeted with a runtime like this on a film, one not named The Lord of the Rings, I utter a reflexive, ugh. But that wasn't the case with John Wick Chapter 4. At all. When the two-hour and 40-minute spec was revealed... I became incredibly excited at the prospect as a huge John Wick fan. I knew instantly beyond the shadow of a doubt that the enormous runtime would be absolutely wall to flipping wall jammed with jaw-dropping stunts and an engrossing story. And well, I was 100% dead on right. The runtime is almost unnoticeable. The story moves like a 9mm round fired at 1500 feet per second from the muzzle of John Wick's $7,000 TTI Pit Viper. By the way, try to avoid drooling when you see it on camera Swiss cheesing high table emissaries. This entire film is eye candy. The sets are stunning. The lighting and cinematography is everything I've come to expect from the Wick franchise and then elevated even further for this latest entry. The sound design is once again outstanding. The engineers are left with zero superfluous dialogue and can thereby focus on making hundreds, if not thousands, of gunshots each have their own space to really work those premium theatrical sound systems. The gravity of each shotgun blast is allowed to pump its transient low-end percussion, which gets felt as much as heard. By the way, can you say dragon's breath? Sure. I knew that you could. And then there's the choreography. Dear God. The choreography. And this, folks, is where Keanu Reeves gives Tom Cruise a run for his money. Cruise spent years learning to fly fighter jets, hang precariously from airplanes mid-flight, even drive motorcycles at full speed off the sides of gorges in Norway, while Christopher McQuarrie has heart failure, waiting for Tom's chute to open. Reeves, however, retorts with a hold my gun and watch this. Reeves has spent nearly a decade training in tactical combat with guns, knives, bare fists, and yes, pencils. And as bonkers and seemingly impossible as some of the stunts and fights are, it's all delivered in a perfectly believable way. That's thanks largely to a lack of CGI apart from some blood spatter. Okay, a lot of blood spatter. Practical effects and real fights done on set and in camera is what gives this film its depth and realism. Just like Top Gun Maverick and the Mission Impossible franchise. Take notes, Marvel Studios. This is how it's done properly and with a budget less than half that of your bland nonsense. Like Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves is pushing 60 years old now, but you'd never know it watching him on camera. These old boys can quite clearly run circles around their younger and far less capable counterparts, and that's because they seem infinitely more dedicated to their craft, delivering something truly unique for the audiences they love. And the audiences love them right back for it. 
And as if that wasn't enough, we were treated to the skilled Japanese martial arts prowess of Hiroyuki Sanada for Mortal Kombat and Bullet Train, and the legendary Chinese Kung Fu of Donnie Yen from Ip Man. By the way, did anybody else get a kick out of the fact that Donnie Yen was playing another butt-kicking blind guy? Looking at you, Star Wars Rogue One. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything in this movie, but I would advise you pay close attention to a final scene. There's seemingly a random shot of Wick's dog, but I assure you, it's not random. A movie that carefully crafted doesn't show that without trying to drop you a hint. That being said, I'll see you for John Wick 5. From Deadline Magazine, John Wick Chapter 4 locks and loads a franchise best Thursday night previews with $8.9 million in the domestic box office. John Wick 4 officially came in at $8.9 million, and the pick also has a great audience score from Thursday night with 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't be shocked if this film goes over $70 million in its domestic opening in the U.S. and Canada with nearly 1,700 premium-priced auditoriums, those PLF screens, it has in its 3,855 theater count. Previews began at 3 p.m. Thursday for the R-rated pick. Tracking had the sequel headed for a $65 to $70 million opening weekend, which would rep a franchise best stateside. And I'll tell you right now, with the way this picture is going with audiences and fan interest hitting peaks at this point, I would be very surprised not to see this opening weekend come even higher than what's being anticipated and tracked right now. Thursday Night Previews easily bests the $5.9 million preview figure of John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, which turned into a previous franchise high opening day of $22.6 million and a three-day opening weekend of $56.8 back in May of 2019. John Wick 4's previews are also ahead of 2018's Halloween, which did $7.7 million on Thursday night, $33 million Friday, and a $76.2 million three-day. Chapter 4 is also beating the Thursday previews of Bad Boys for Life at $6.3 million, which ultimately turned in to a $62.5 million Friday to Sunday back in January of 2020. One of the things to note about the John Wick franchise is its massively increasing audience size from one picture to the next. If we look back at John Wick in 2014, the worldwide box office came in at 76 million. 43 of that came from the U.S. and Canada. John Wick 2, just two years and roughly four months later, a $30 million opening weekend compared to 14, a $92 million domestic haul compared to 43, more than doubling. And the worldwide box office exploded from 76 to 171 million. And then along came John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum with a 56.8 million opening weekend, a $171 million total domestic box office. That's right, the total domestic box office for John Wick Chapter 3 was equal to that of the entire global box office from John Wick Chapter 2 just two years earlier. The total worldwide haul for John Wick Chapter 3 nearly doubled yet again to $327 million. So that should give you some indication of where this is going if John Wick Chapter 3 opened with nearly $57 million and this picture right now looks like $75 million is easily on the table if not breaching 80. We're probably looking at a John Wick Chapter 4 that may finally cross the half billion dollar threshold by the time it concludes its global run. I think that's definitely in the cards, and that would be something. This film has a $100 million production budget. It wouldn't also surprise me that considering the popularity of this, that Lionsgate would really spend some money on marketing, maybe as much as another $100 million again. This movie really only needs to get to around $400 million, and considering the success of the previous entries, I think that one's pretty much in the bag. And there's also the consideration that Lionsgate does things differently than some of the other major Hollywood studios and distributors out there like Disney and Warner Brothers. Lionsgate doesn't dump these things onto PVOD or to a streaming service 60 days after they debut in theaters. You can pretty much rest assured that John Wick Chapter 4 is going to get a very long shelf life in the cinemas before it goes to premium video on demand for sale and rental and physical media, and even a longer period of time after that before Lionsgate drops it on their streaming partner's service.
It just goes to show that once again, with a well done film, given a traditional theatrical windowing system is going to turn a lot of profits for a film studio. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you seen John Wick 4 yet as you watch this? Are you going to see it? Are you interested? Have you seen any of the first three? Tell me what you think about the franchise. It's absolutely one of my favorites. And while you're at it, make sure that if you have not already, please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And until next time, Take care.